Hello and welcome to the next edition of the Briefings Direct Voice of the Analyst podcast series. I'm Dana Gardner, Principal Analyst at Inner Arbor Solutions, your host and moderator for this ongoing discussion on the latest insights into successful digital transformation. This hybrid IT management strategies interview explores new ways that businesses can procure and consume IT as a service. We'll now hear from an IT industry analyst on why changes in cloud deployment models are forcing a rethinking of IT economics and maybe even the very nature of acquiring and cost-optimizing digital services. Here to help us explore everything as a service, as a business model, is Rhett Dillingham, Vice President and Senior Analyst at More Insights and Strategy. Welcome back, Rhett. Hi, Dana. Great to be here. Brett, uh, Rhett, what do you see as some of the drivers that are now making uh, procurement of hybrid and multi-cloud services complex and therefore ripe for adjustment? So this oftentimes has started with an organic adoption from the development and BU side of the organization out of interest in agility and speed and is now coming back around to the more IT-focused topics of governance, orchestration across platforms, and modernizing of private infrastructure to mate with the public cloud adoption that those BUs have, have pushed for. So there's a, a hybrid interest there. There's a multi-cloud management and governance interest there. And those those are complexities that the, the public clouds are not set up and attempting to dress because they're focused on their own platforms. So the way you acquire IT these days, it isn't apples or oranges. It's more like fruit salad. There's so many different ways that you can get it that it's hard to measure and, and compare and then therefore optimize. And there are trade-offs there. There are some organizations that are choosing to focus on and adopt a single public cloud vendor, for example, but others are seeing that as a long-term risk in management of sourcing and their flexibility as a business. So they're adopting multiple cloud vendors, which is tending to be more of the popular strategic orientation. All right. So for those organizations that don't want fruit salad, that are trying to homogenize their acquisition of IT services, cloud, local, private cloud, what have you, does this then prompt the opportunity to relook and reevaluate how all of IT is, is financed and therefore perhaps move to a, a, a different model where you can measure, meter, and even charge back on an accurate basis? Absolutely. And that's something you can address regardless of whether you're adopting a single cloud infrastructure versus multiple. The more that you're using multiple, you're going to consider tools that are, that are set up to address multiple infrastructures and not base your capabilities and tools on a single vendor's set. For example, an Amazon, Microsoft, Google set of tools, um, you're going to go with a cloud management vendor who's producing tools across topics of security, compliance, cost management, monitoring, etc. So the days when a IT director would identify the right platform and hardware and software, buy that, you know, have it airlifted in, seems to be a bygone era, oversimplified, because we're seeing the challenges for IT now get more into the economics and financing of things, right? This is about arbitrage. This is about do you uh, borrow? Do you uh, build a budget on an operating basis? So does the function of IT acquisition now move outside of IT? And should they be thinking perhaps more about a chief procurement officer or chief financial officer being a big part of the IT equation? By virtue of the way cloud has been adopted, more by the BU ahead of IT in many cases, this has been pushed down that route and now it's circling back towards the financial view, which actually doesn't go to the CFO and financial organization as much as turn them into a champion of IT and being the governance arm, where traditionally they do have the role of uh, enabling, at least, if not managing themselves, cost, uh, security, and compliance. So it is natural for the BUs and, and development arm to look to IT for tools and capabilities on that front, uh, not because they necessarily need to shed accountability for it, but because that is the traditional role of IT is to enable that, those capabilities. And IT is, is therefore set up to, to your question on procurement. IT is, is best set up to look at that picture across vendors and across infrastructures, more so than the individual team by team or BU by BU decisions that have been made so far and aggregate the, the picture of the cloud strategy at the largest organizational level. Of course, a central tenant of good procurement 
is to look for volume discounts and to buy in bulk. And so perhaps having a more holistic or strategic approach to acquiring your cloud services would lend itself to a better bargaining position. It seems pretty obvious, but a lot of organizations have a hard time executing that. That's absolutely the pitch of a cloud-by-cloud vendor approach in their trade-offs, right? So you can certainly aggregate more spend on a single cloud vendor, uh, even specifically public cloud, and potentially achieve more discount in usage by that aggregation. The rebuttal is that on a long-term basis, your negotiating leverage in that relationship is constrained uh, versus if you have adopted multiple cloud infrastructures and can, can dialogue across vendors on that pricing and the discounting. Now, that may turn into more of a 80-20, 90-10 split than a 50-50 split, but at least having some cross-infrastructure capability by setting yourself up with orchestration, monitoring, governance tools that run across clouds, you're at least in a strategic position from a sourcing perspective. The trade-off is that cost aggregation and your, your training and education in the organization necessary to understand how to use different infrastructures because they do have different interfaces, APIs, the automation's different down the list. I think that's why we've seen from vendors like Hewlett Packard Enterprise an increased emphasis on economics and not just the ability to use an API approach to compose or order up uh, cloud services because the issues that we're bringing up are forcing IT to rethink the financial implications. If they don't, then they could become chaotic, both in terms of their traditional procurement of IT as well as this this new approach. So are the vendors uh, onto something here when it comes to providing insight and simplicity in an otherwise chaotic multi-vendor market? Absolutely. And, and certainly from uh, the perspective that when we talk multi-cloud, we're not just talking multiple public clouds. There is a, a reality of large existing investment in private infrastructure that continues for various purposes, cost optimization, security, compliance, uh, auditability, and customization of infrastructure for certain workloads where cost can be optimized. That means that the tool set to be considered is across public and private and a vendor that's looking uh, beyond just public cloud and its own cloud platform like an HPE that is delivering a multi-cloud management orientation it is set up to be a potential tour guide and strategic consultative advisor in that process. And that consultative input is very valuable when you see how much pattern matching there is across customers, not just within the same industry, but across industries in what it looks like to triage your application portfolio, consider what migrations you would want to do across cloud infrastructures, and set up your governance and control process education structures. Right. So I'm sure that there are many of the systems integrators, as in addition to some of the vendors that we've mentioned, that are going to help you know more organizations, large and, and midsize, make this transition from traditional IT procurement to everything as a service operating budget procurement their lessons learned will be very valuable rather than trying to do this on your own or or go down a dark alley and make mistakes. Because as we know, some of the cloud providers are probably not going to stand up and wave a flag if you're spending too much money with them. Yes. And the, the patterns of challenge to progression in cloud orientation are, are, are so clear that the consultative partners, based on dozens of implementations and executions of this, are, are just far more thoroughly aware of those patterns and how to avoid falling into the traps and pitfalls along the way than a single organization can expect itself internally to to be savvy about. It's a very fast-moving target. These cloud providers are bringing out new services all the time. There's literally thousands of different uh, types of services on deployment for infrastructure as a service, for storage, for integrating uh, APIs and third-party services. Very, very complex, very dynamic. Do you have any advice for how companies should be perhaps having more of a hive mentality among different disparate management functions, procurement, finance, planning and budget, uh, IT, architecture and planning? Uh, It seems to me that there should be perhaps some thinking about having meetings at a higher level or a different type of meeting when it comes to approaching this whole concept of of multi-cloud and hybrid cloud uh, economics. That really comes back to the requirement that IT partner with the business unit or units 
uh, and the more business units there are in the organization, the more that IT is, is critical in driving this collaboration at the highest organizational level to be responsible for the cloud strategy. The cloud strategy across these topics of platform selection, governance, process, people skills, that's the type of collaboration needed, and it flows into these recommendations from the consultancies of how to avoid the traps and pitfalls, uh, avoiding mismanagement of expectations and goals that results in clear outcomes on the execution of projects, making sure that security and compliance are, are considered and involved from a functional perspective all the way through and, and on down the list. The decision on what advice to bring in is really about the topic and the selection on the menu. You've got consideration of the Uber strategy and approach, how you triage your application portfolio and plan for how you best want to match capabilities to apps across infrastructures and platforms. You've got migration planning. You've got migration execution. Those can be similar or, or separate items. You've got development methodologies and the software platform supporting those. And then security and compliance expertise. These are all aspects where certain consultancies will have expertise more than others, and not many are going to be strong across all of those. Well, it certainly sounds like a lot of thinking and planning to do and perhaps reevaluating the ways of the past. I'm afraid we'll have to leave it there. We've been exploring new ways that businesses can procure and consume IT as a service, and we've learned uh, why changes in cloud deployment models are forcing a rethinking of IT economics in general. I'd like to thank our guest. We've been here with Rhett Dillingham. He's the Vice President and Senior Analyst at More Insights and Strategy. Thank you, sir. Great to be with you, Daniel. And a big thank you as well to our audience for joining us for this Briefings Direct Voice of the Analyst Hybrid IT Management Strategies interview. I'm Dana Gardner, Principal Analyst at Inter Arbor Solutions, your host for this ongoing series of Hewlett Packard Enterprise sponsored discussions. Thanks again for listening. Please pass this along to your IT community and do come back next time.